everyone, my name is Maddie, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video where I'm going to be doing the spoilers tag. So this was a tag created by Gunpowder Fiction and Plot, which I will link down below, of course, their channel will be linked. And I haven't seen very many people do this. I did see that Drinking By My Shelf has done it. I've not been tagged in this, but I'm doing it anyway. I will tag some people in the description who can do it if they want to. Obviously no pressure to do it, it's just fun. And if you want to do this tag after watching this video, then just say that I tagged you. That's fine by me. Just consider yourself tagged if you want to give it a go. So this is a really interesting tag. As you can tell from the title, it's all about spoilers. And I feel like I have some quite strong views in terms of spoilers about what I consider a spoiler and kind of how it impacts my reading. I have said multiple times on this channel, I like going into a book really quite blind. I like not knowing much at all. So I think this will be a really interesting tag and the questions are really interesting. There's nine questions, though the last one isn't particularly related. So we're gonna go through these questions and see what debate they bring up. So the very first question is, what do you consider a spoiler? In terms of what I consider a spoiler, it's kind of hard to define, but realistically, any piece of information that you wouldn't know from a premise or like, a description someone gives of the book. And I realize that's really vague because everyone's gonna give a different description. But like, if it's not a core piece of information that can be used to either sell you to read the book or to like warn someone to trigger warnings and stuff are never spoilers. Trigger warnings and content warnings are not spoilers. They should be included in every book. At the same time, if you're not someone that feels like you need them, you also have the right to not look at them. And then if you did consider it a spoiler, you wouldn't have to see it anyway. But protecting people is never a spoiler and never a bad thing, even if it tells you about content that's gonna be in the book. So in terms of what actually counts as a spoiler, it can be the result of a relationship. It can be a character death. I would even go so far as to say that saying someone dies is a spoiler to an extent because it impacts the way you read. I think that's my definition. A spoiler is anything that will change the way you read the book. So if someone says to you, there is an LGBT relationship in this book, I guess you could say that changes the way you read it because you'll be looking out for it, but not really. Whereas if someone says a character dies, at least me personally, I will spend that whole book waiting to see who dies, knowing it's gonna happen and like second guessing things instead of just reading it and enjoying. Sorry, I realized my cushion was down and it was annoying me. So it definitely is kind of that line for me, but it is also situational. So for example, the Poppy War. I've not read the Poppy War, but I'm pretty certain characters die in it. And that I wouldn't consider a spoiler because like it's an epic fantasy book, people are going to die. Whereas if you had like a contemporary story, a contemporary romance and someone said a character died, I'd be like, whoa, okay, that's probably quite a key plot point. Not that a character's death isn't in a fantasy story, but I guess it's expected in that. So it's so dependent, it's so situational. But I think my kind of one line definition of what is a spoiler would have to be anything that impacts significantly how I read the book and what I'm thinking about when I'm reading. So if it's making me specifically look for something, if it's making me wait for something, if it means I know that something exciting is coming, it matters. And I was gonna give an example, but I think one of the questions later is a book you've been spoiled for, and it's going to be debatable when we get to that, but I'll leave that for them. Oh, okay, so I've just read the second question and it kind of ties into what I already said, is does the genre you're reading impact what you consider a spoiler? Yes, so much. So as I said, for fantasy, if I'm reading a fantasy book and someone says, oh my God, that character death, I'll be like, ooh, wonder who it's gonna be. If I was reading like a romance book and someone said, oh my God, that character death, I'd be like, whoa, what the hell? You just, you just ruined for me that someone's gonna die. Because it, as I said, it comes with that level of expectation of what you would expect to see in the book. And if it's something you're expecting to see, it's not really a spoiler. But if it's not something you would expect to see in that genre or in that book, then yeah, it's a spoiler. Like, I'm trying to think of other examples. Like again, similarly, if I was reading a mystery and someone said, wow, the twist in that was amazing, I'd kind of be like, okay, there's a twist, it's a mystery, it's a thriller, you'd expect that. Whereas if I was reading a contemporary story again and someone said, oh my God, that twist, and for example, say I knew there was a love triangle in it, my instant thing would be like, well, I can probably put two and two together and know that it's not gonna go the direction you expect it to go. So 
I guess it really depends in exactly the same like if I'm reading a fantasy story and you say oh my god yes the main couple end up together I would almost consider that a bit of a spoiler slightly because in a fantasy there's not necessarily that expectation people die people get split up it's more unlikely whereas if someone tells you in a romance book that the main couple end up together you're kind of like well yeah that's the point of the genre you're waiting for that so yes it is highly genre dependent and it is one of the reasons spoilers are so difficult to navigate because at the same time everyone will have a different definition of what a spoiler is and so i err on the side of telling less and i never say more than i would like to know going into a book i'm sure i've unintentionally spoiled things before if for example the only familiarity i have with a book is explanations i've heard from other people then if i repeat that i may unintentionally be spoiling i don't know i've not read it i've not read a synopsis but I always try and stay as vague as I can when giving synopses and when discussing books because I know that I'm really averse to spoilers. I love going into books really, really blind. So I do my best to be as vague as I can because as I said, you can't guarantee what other people are going to consider a spoiler. And it also does vary. So I won't name it because I will spoil it by saying it. There is a specific, very well-known, very well-loved fantasy book where if someone said about that book oh my god the character death i would never think that's a fair thing to say about that book to someone who's not read it because there are a small section of core characters and so you know it's going to be one of them or something like the poppy war i'm not familiar with other than like three names any of the characters so someone saying the character death in no way alerts me as to who's gonna die so i don't feel that's a spoiler it's just an expected Whereas if you've got a small cast of characters and it's like really evident that you don't follow anyone else, it's going a bit far. Okay, I'm doing a struggle today. Sorry, we've just changed the camera angle again because my back was hurting, so I want to slouch more. Um, so anyway, moving on to question three, which I've just closed down, I'm now realizing. Okay, this again comes into something I've already said. I really need to learn to read questions before starting answering. Question three, all the best bits are in the trailer. Sometimes the synopsis can be too detailed. Do you research books prior to reading them or do you go in blind? I do definitely research books before reading them, before buying them, but I very much go in blind. Like when I'm reading a synopsis, I will normally read the tagline and maybe really briefly skim a line or two of the actual synopsis because yes, way too many synopses give you way too much information. Like all I wanna know from a synopsis is what genre am I reading? Are there any like tropes that I want to get a vibe are going to be included? And just like, I guess a very, very simple overview of what's going to happen. So for example, Strange the Dreamer actually has a really good, really vague synopsis, which I love. But like all I would want to know is it's fantasy, it's got an adventure and that it has like a lost city where something has happened and someone needs to go and help. That's all I need to know going into a book like that. And yet I feel like people give this huge synopsis, which explains so much more, which I would personally want to find out whilst reading the book. So a very simple example, I'm literally just using the book, this book because it's next to me. First Become Ashes by K.M. Sparrow. I can now actually read the whole synopsis because I'm like past halfway in the book. So at this point, I doubt the synopsis is going to spoil me. But all I wanted to read was this bold bit at the top, which says the fellowship raised Lark to kill monsters. His partner betrayed them to the feds, but Lark knows his magic is real and he'll do anything to complete his quest. Honestly, actually, I don't feel bad reading that out in this video because it's literally the tagline, basically. But even that's more than I knew and more than I would have wanted to know having read this. Like, yeah, I like knowing this bit. So this is a fantastic standalone adventure that blends pain and pleasure and make readers question what is real and what is magical. That's the kind of thing I love. I love those like single line author blurbs, explanations of the book without saying anything about the plot. Because then the next bit says, Lark spent the first 24 years of his life training for a righteous quest to rid the world of monsters. That much I knew. And then I, the other bit I knew was he never expected the government would tell him that monsters aren't real, that there is no magic and all the pain was for nothing. That's all I knew. And it's this huge chunk of text here. Like, I just, I feel like synopses almost always say more than I want. So I'm always very careful reading them. I read the tagline, I read the first line of the synopsis, and then I maybe skim to the first line of the second paragraph as there is one. Rarely do I read more than that. Occasionally, if I feel like it's not telling me something I don't want to know. But rarely, I very frequently will read and see a character name. I'm like, nope, that's detail. I don't want to know that right now. And I just put the synopsis down and I don't read it. 
And yeah, it's just, it's what I'm like. I like going into books really, really blind. Most books I buy are coming off other people's recommendations. So either another booktuber or one of my friends or my mum. That's almost all the books I buy and read are other people have said they love it. And they normally say the reason they love it, which isn't necessarily a plot thing. Like they say they love the relationship or they love the characters or the writing was beautiful. None of that spoils the book. And all of that gives me a reason to buy it and know I want to read it. So I guess that's generally how I research my books. And that's also why I often read reviews instead of reading a synopsis. Like I'll read enough of a synopsis to have a vague idea about the book so that I know it's a content I'm interested in. But yeah, if that makes sense, that's kind of what I lean towards doing more so than just reading synopses because I do absolutely think they say way too much a lot of the time. Okay, number four is sometimes the introduction or translator's notes can spoil the ending, especially for classics. Has this ever happened to you? It has not happened to me, mainly because I don't read very many translated works or classics. Um, however, I do know that this is a thing. So if there was an introduction by someone other than the author, or even by the author, if it was written a while after the book, if that was at the beginning of the book, I would read it after I've read the book because I know that this is a thing that happens. I know, I don't know which book, but there was a Stephen King book where someone read the introduction and in a video was like, this is ridiculous. I just read the introduction. It spoiled the whole book for me. What the hell just happened? So because I'm aware of this being a thing, I would not read it or I would start reading with extreme caution. And if I start seeing like character names crop up, I would stop. Again, it's just me being cautious because I know I like going in blind, but it also, infuriates me that this is a thing that happens. If it is before the text, you should be safe to assume that you can read it before the core text and not have the core text spoiled. You'll just get context for it. That is what you should be safe to assume, but it's often not the case. And honestly, that is ridiculous to me. I don't understand it at all. Just put that at the end, put the author's note at the end. There is no need. Or if you want an introduction, split it. Do a one page introduction, giving the like important information that you need for context or whatever, and then put the rest of the analysis or whatever else you want to say at the end. I don't understand it. I just, I do not understand why someone would do that. It makes no sense to me, especially as so many of the books I read have introductions or prologues or things like that, which are actually part of the core text it's not always easy to tell where that line lies. And so if I went in thinking that was kind of completely necessary to read the book and then I got spoiled by it, I would be pissed. Luckily it's never happened to me and hopefully it never will, but I cannot understand why that is a thing at all. Okay, question five is name a time someone spoiled a novel for you. I don't really have an answer for this. Um, again, because I'm so averse to spoilers, if someone starts talking about something that's even vaguely spoilery, I run away. I just go like, no, 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 shush, 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 I've not read it yet, don't say anything. And then I shut them right down. I think my mum has spoiled a couple small things in books for me, but she now knows what I'm like, so it doesn't do it anymore. The biggest spoiler I've ever had is, for those of you who don't know, because none of you would, um, I like Marvel, I'm horrifically behind, I haven't seen any of the recent films and I am somehow still almost completely unspoiled for like Endgame and stuff. I have had one of the big spoilers through a meme of all places. I got that spoiler, but the rest I haven't had spoiled yet. Um, but my brother forgot I hadn't watched them and gave me a big spoiler. I don't actually remember it now, which is good, but that was unfortunate. So books, I'm generally pretty good at avoiding spoilers. There's definitely been a few, but a thing I try and do is if I read a spoiler or like think I'm reading a spoiler, I will do something straight away to get my brain on something else. Cause I have the memory of a sieve at the best of times. And so I can kind of forget it quite often. If it's like really hard hitting and I'm like, oh my God, what that happens. And it's not something I've ever like known about before, then obviously it's gonna stick with me. But I feel like a lot of the time I have heard in videos, people speak way more in detail about a book than I want or similar. And I've managed to avoid it by just skipping through that bit, listening to the next bit, not paying attention, and then managing to basically just not remember it. By the time I come to the book, I might remember like parts of it, but never huge details. So like an example of that is A Little Life. Quite a few people I follow have read it and all of them talk in so much more detail than I want to know. Not saying what they're saying is like actual spoilers, but it's more than I want to know going in. 
and so I just like skip through and try really hard not to listen to anything they say um, and it's got away with it so far. The only thing I'd say I've been spoiled for but again this is no one's fault and I'm actually gonna repeat it because everyone other than me knows this and actually I knew it before reading the book. For me it impacted my enjoyment of the book. I have not heard it impact it for anyone else. Basically there is a book by E. Lockhart called We Were Liars. It is renowned for having a huge twist. That is not new information to anyone who knows about this book. It's a thriller, it has a twist. Shock. That's not surprising. However, I had heard so many people saying this before I read the damn book. I went into the book looking for it and I, I guessed the twist about five pages in and it made the book very, very boring. Um, so yeah, I kind of consider that being spoiled to me, but that was also no one's fault. They told me very common information, which no one else would mind knowing and I didn't mind knowing in principle. It just massively impacted my reading when I read it. But that was that was no one's fault. It just happened. And then question six is, have you ever spoiled a novel for someone else? To my knowledge, no, other than intentionally. Like I've spoiled many books for my mum because number one, she doesn't care about spoilers pretty much at all, though she is slightly more caring recently. And number two, she doesn't read the same books as me a lot. So sometimes I want to discuss a book I've read. And so I will literally purposefully tell her the full plot of the book so we can discuss it, even if she's not read it. But I always check with her like, is this a book you're going to want to read? Am I alright to completely spoil it for you? If she said yes, then I will. If she doesn't, obviously then I won't. So I spoiled many books for her, but completely intentionally. I don't think I've ever spoiled a book for someone else. If I have, I apologise. I try really hard, as I said, to stay as vague as I can when talking about books. But I am sure every so often I'll be talking about a book I finished and say something I've loved and someone will be like, oh, I wish I hadn't known that. But I do my best to be vague. If I fail, I'm very sorry. Question seven is if you think that spoilers ruin a novel, are there some novels or authors or genres you don't reread? Yes and no. I feel like thrillers would be the one thing I'd be least likely to reread, especially if it's like a whodunit or something with a big twist, because once you know that twist, it obviously does change things. However, if it's done well, and when I'm reading it, I'm like enjoying that process of like, oh, I don't know who did this, I don't know this, I don't know that, then I would want to reread knowing what I know. I would always want to read it the first time being in the dark because I think it's important to have that feeling of not knowing instead of knowing the whole way through, that ruins it. But then once you've had that emotional sort of, you know, roller coaster of working all that out and getting to the end, it's then quite fascinating to reread and see like where they've dropped hints, where they've dropped clues, where there's been little details thrown in that you missed because you weren't expecting it, but you can catch if you do know what's going to happen. So there's value to rereading, but it's being read in a very different way that second time, which I also think is valuable, but I wouldn't want to be reading it in that way for the first time. The first time I want to be caught up in it, the second time I don't mind it being more sort of analytical. So yeah, it's, it's definitely the way. I feel like I used to say that romance I wouldn't reread, and I kind of still agree with that. There's a few romances I'd reread if I genuinely enjoyed the whole process of seeing them get together and all of that. But when you go in the first time, you know they're going to get together. The thing that's interesting is seeing how. So once you've seen that rereading, it doesn't often hold much. If there's like brilliant character banter or really good scenes or it's just overall adorable, then yeah, maybe I'd reread it. For example, Talia Hibbert's books, I would very happily reread all of, and I'm sure I will, because they're just such a fun experience to read. But there are also a lot of romance books I've read over the years where I wouldn't be particularly interested in rereading them because once I know how the couple get together, I wouldn't want to see that exact same process happen again. I want to see a different couple get together in a different way. So yes and no, but I think that just comes down to rereading as a whole. Question eight is when you review books, do you keep it spoiler free and does that limit you? Again, yes and no. I try in general to keep my reviews all spoiler free. If I am ever putting spoilers in, it will be so clearly declared that there are going to be spoilers. Um, if for example, I want to put spoilers in just for a really short section, I'll either hold my hand up or like hold something up or put a timestamp to skip to on the screen, something like that. I am really careful that if I know I am talking about spoilers, I make sure it is so clearly stated so that I don't ever risk ruining it for someone. But 
generally I find it not too bad talking about books spoiler free. It does make it difficult, especially in terms of if I think the plot was really well done, you can't also go into detail of why you think that, or if character development was really interesting, that's quite hard to talk about without ruining and explaining what happened, but you can make it work. I do feel that I sometimes get repetitive by being spoiler free because I'm just saying like I loved it because it was good and I can't tell you why and it gets harder and harder and harder as series progress um, because then obviously you can't talk about anything in the book, it gets really difficult. But it's one of the reasons I love doing read-alongs and book clubs with live shows because in the live shows we say we talk like 15 minutes spoiler free and then we have 45 minutes to just spoil the whole thing and that is amazing and you get so so many interesting conversations happening in that so I definitely have a really fun time with that and really really enjoy doing it so that's definitely a massive plus but I do believe that pretty much all books can be reviewed spoiler free unless you were trying to do a specific review for like a fourth book in a series then I can understand you wanting to put spoilers in it because you would be stuck for things to say. But I do try and review spoiler free as much as possible to make my content accessible to, especially when I love a book, I'm trying to like convince people to read it and tell you why I loved it. So of course I don't want to spoil it. I am slightly more lax of spoilers for books I don't like. I still wouldn't ever spoil some because they may still like it, but I'm more willing to like put a section into my video that is spoiler filled. If I didn't like the book, I don't know why I just am, yeah. Okay, so those are the core questions. And then it says, basically shout out, I think five other creators. Um, and I think that's gonna be kind of tagging them as well. So I am going to do this. And the first person I'm gonna mention because it makes me laugh. And this comes from a place of absolute love. First person I'm gonna tag is Becca in the books. Cause I feel like Becca might have very different views to me. The reason I feel like this is however much I love Becca's videos so much and I love Becca so much and I love watching her vlogs, I skip through such chunks of her talking about books that I want to read because she doesn't spoil them but she gives a lot more detail than I want to know before I read a book and as I said I am particularly averse to spoilers. I will literally go into a book knowing nothing other than it's enemies to lovers, it's cute and it's fantasy. That's all I need and I'm there. Probably queer as well. But she goes into so much detail like she will have a book that she's halfway through and have like a 10 minute chunk in a video talking about it and i'm just like mm -mm, no that is definitely gonna be more detail when i read so i skip past it so i'd be really really intrigued to see becca's take on this i would love to see answers from india i would love to see answers from spoops obviously all these people are going to be linked down below india at what's india right and spoops at spoopy hall I would also be really, really, really intrigued to see answers from Ali at Reverie with Ali, who we linked down below. And then it said five, but I'm gonna do six. We're gonna say Steph from Steph Loves and Jade from JD Ray Reads. Don't know how many tags they do, but I'll be intrigued to see what they do with this one. Because I feel like spoilers are a really interesting discussion in the book community. And there's been so many discussions over the years about what counts as a spoiler, what counts as a content warning. As I've already said, if it is a content warning and that content is being spoiled in adverted commas for the purpose of protecting someone, I could not care less if I find that out. There was a book recently where a big debate kicked off because someone asked like, is there miscarriage in this book? I've heard there might be. And loads of people kicked off like, wow, you just told me this happens. And like, they didn't tell you what character, they didn't tell you when, they didn't tell you circumstances. Yes, there is now one piece of information you didn't know, which you do now and I've read the book and I know what they were referring to and I do understand how it might impact your reading, but that is not more important than someone going into a book safely knowing they're not gonna be hurt by reading it. Like quite frankly, spoilers are a pain and reading is great without spoilers. And this is coming from someone who loves knowing nothing. People's safety and well-being is more important and that is not up for debate. So, yeah, very intrigued to see what they all think of spoilers because spoilers are definitely a point of contention for a lot of people. But anyway, that is it for the video. That is all my takes on spoilers. Thank you again to Gunpowder Fiction and Plot for creating this tag. It was really interesting and really good fun. Um, as I said, anyone who wants to do it, consider yourself tagged by me, I'd love to see. But that is it for the video. So give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Comment down below your views on spoilers. I feel like a very good debate could happen in the comments. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. Links to all of my social media as well as my wishlist and Patreon are down in the description in case you want to check those out. But thank you so much for watching. So bye and I'll see you in the next one.